You know, the past few weeks, I've been buying potato cakes from a supermarket, and it got me thinking, why am I buying these? Sure, they're quite convenient, but they're really easy to make at home, and they're pretty cheap as well. For me, the ultimate potato cake should be slightly crispy on the outside, and nice and fluffy in the middle. It makes for the perfect brunch dish. I'm serving mine with egg and bacon. Let's do it. Some chefs talk negatively about microwaves, but they do come in handy, particularly when you want to cook a couple of jack potatoes quickly. Zap these until they're cooked and let them cool. Hot potato has that name for a reason. I will scoop out the inside shortly to make my mashed potato. I've seen this to be the preferred option of mashed potato for quite a few chefs. Boiling spuds and water is fine, but then you're prone to diluting the flavour. Whereas if you're working with a relatively dry ingredient, there's no danger of this happening. I use this technique to make pom puree and I pass the potato through a sieve on my bangers and mash video. I'll link it to the card later so you can check that one out. On this occasion, I'm going to use a potato ricer. This makes quick work of getting these mashed and I'll be sure to scoop out all of those floury potatoes from the skins. But whatever you do, don't throw those skins away. What I did is cook them in the bacon fat that was left over. You'll see the bacon cooking later on and then put them in a hottish oven for 20 to 30 minutes and serve them with a mayo, creme fraiche and truffle oil dip. They were divine. Anyway, back to the task on hand. Basically, I'm going to make a really smooth, flavoursome mash. I add in butter and beat together with a wooden spoon. Add your seasoning and a touch of milk to loosen. Keep mixing it to get the right consistency and then add in some regular, all-purpose plain flour. I'm not measuring, I'm going by fill and I'm going to start off with three heat tablespoons to give you an idea for two large potatoes. When you add in this flour to the mixture, it will change immediately and it will look just a touch more powdery. All of that flour is soaking up that milk and the butter. Mix until you feel it's coming together and when you feel the mixture is going to hold up in the pan. The flour is great because it acts even more as a binding agent and helps get the colour later on. Next we want to get these formed into little cakes, about a couple centimetres in thickness and about 10 or so in diameter. Using morphous flour on your worktop will help the potato not stick and form these into the right shape and texture. Pat them down with your hands, take your time, it's quite therapeutic to be honest, and when you're done leave on the workbench so they're ready. Get your biggest non-stick pan on the go on a medium high heat, add in some vegetable oil, let it heat up. Now the only thing with these potato cakes is they're quite delicate, but I learned something here and that's if you have a dough scraper, that's the perfect tool to help move these little fellows around. If you don't have a dough scraper, you can use a clean beer mat or something like that to give a little bit more support when moving them. I got told off for using this type of scraper in a non-stick pan. You may want to bear that in mind if you dare do what I did. Your spouse may tell you off and tell you the risks of using this type of scraper. Just a warning. I could see her point though. Coming back to these potato cakes, let them bubble, add in some butter. This will foam up nicely and give these potato cakes some lovely colour and flavour. I can only fit two or three of these in the pan at once, so whilst I've got those on the go, I'm going to start off some bacon. This is really good quality, dry cured, pretty thick, streaky bacon. Start it off slowly, let all of that fat render out and keep flipping. Be careful with that metal scraper though. Potato cakes are looking amazing and I'm really happy with them. They are going to taste awesome. Lastly, poach an egg or two and serve.
these potato cakes are brilliant. I love how simple they are. It's all about mashed potato, a bit of flour, you can add butter and milk as well in the pan, nice hot pan, a little bit of butter just to crisp them up. And they are beautiful. Great with bacon, great with eggs. Why not go the full whole cover, kind of full English, but swap out the hash browns for potato cakes. They are lovely, very easy to make. Here's my favorite bit, the taste test. I'll dive in, tell you how it tastes. I've just popped the egg from my shot, so the egg's already burst. I'm gonna dive in, see what it's like. So, so lovely, great flavour. The mashed potato is nice and velvety. I think the butter definitely gives it a nice amount of richness. It's, uh, it's a brilliant contrast with that salty, crispy bacon and that lovely egg as well. The, the egg is so, so delicious. As always, thank you for your support. Thank you for watching. I've got some really cool concepts coming up on the channel. So be sure to keep watching my content. I think you'll really love what I've got planned. Wish you the best of luck in making these potato cakes at home. They are really scrummy. I definitely recommend giving it a shot. Until next time, happy cooking.